Okay, just to recap, um, the uh, uh, symmetric uh, algorithms that we've done so far, uh, the algorithm is, uh, you know, for uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphs, it's just substitution. The key is which things are you substituting for what? And uh, as far as we know, that was only known to one person, but it wasn't hard to figure out. Um, the... Uh, algorithm for the uh, Caesar cipher again substitution and it's just you know how many letters down the alphabet are you moving to get your substitute character um, the uh, the key in the Greek uh, well the algorithm in in the Greek leather belt thing is is uh, uh, wrapping the the belt around the uh, rod uh, the key is the diameter of the rod um, so, um, the, the algorithm and, and the key. Um, uh, we're going to get to Kirchhoff's uh, law uh, eventually, but uh, uh, basically it boils down to um, you shouldn't rely on keeping the algorithm secret. People are going to figure out the algorithm. Uh, you got to uh, rely on keeping the key secret. But in terms of symmetric algorithms, you've got to agree on the key somehow with the person you're communicating with. So either you agree in advance uh, or you uh, transmit it out of band. You know, if, if you had a secure communications channel, you wouldn't need encryption. So anyway, um, so uh, substitution, cipher, um, uh, Caesar cipher, as I say, you know, pretty simple and pretty easy uh, to guess the key with a brute force attack. So we can make it a bit harder if instead of using the proper alphabet, we scramble the alphabet. And then um, the, you know, it's, it's not as obvious. And the key, the address space is larger, but the key is the scrambled alphabet. And therefore, we have a much larger key to transmit or to agree to in the first place. So, uh, you know, that could get a little dicey. So, we got a couple of systems that were developed later on. Um, these, uh, well, I think the earliest of these is only uh, like 400 years old. Um, so, this is fairly recent in terms of the history that we've been looking at. Um, and, uh, <laughs> ironically, um, both of these are named after people who didn't think they were very good. So, uh, you know, interesting uh, little historical quirk there. Um, the uh, one that we know as, both of them are also based on grids. Uh, so, interesting there. Uh, the di division air cipher, um, you would make a grid shifting the alphabet over one space for every line in the grid. Um, now, seeing as how that's not a terribly sophisticated algorithm to figure out, um, you would use as the key a code word which would tell you which line you use to encrypt the next letter. Now, this does... Uh, what this does is it means that we're substituting, but we're not substituting the same character for each letter, um, depending on the word that we use and uh, the letters in that word and which lines we pick. Um, we can choose, uh, you know, we can have different letters representing things. Now, what this does is it allows us to avoid what is known as frequency analysis. Um, and this is another part of cryptanalysis. If you know the language, the characteristics of the language, you can make um, a, an awful lot of pretty good uh, guesses and, and uh, means of cryptanalysis to break, uh, you know, simple, uh, so, and even some fairly complex uh, ciphers. So, um, We've got uh, the English language. We're, you know, uh, fighting against people who also speak English. Uh, we've got 26 letters in the alphabet. We know that. And the most common letter that is used is E. 
uh, you know, pretty much all the time. Uh, second most common letter is T. As a matter of fact, the word senorita gives us, uh, not in order, unfortunately, but it gives us the nine most commonly used letters. So, you know, we look at a large body of text. We see, you know, which character is most frequently used in that. Okay, that's probably the letter E. Let's start writing that out. Second most commonly used symbol. And sometimes, you know, people think they're really fancy by using uh, graphical symbols rather than letters. No, it works just as well. So, second most commonly used symbol, that's probably T. And so we go and we start working through and seeing if we can figure out um, what they used. Now, that's if we're using the Caesar cipher. If we go to the divisionaire cipher, all of a sudden this is all messed up because there could be five different symbols representing the letter E, or six, or eight, depending on the length of the keyword that we, we use. So that is one. Now the other, uh, and, and uh, divisionaire was somebody who studied cryptography. Uh, he, would, he did not invent this, and as I say, he didn't think it was particularly good. So, uh, the next is Playfair, also a grid. You get a grid. Um, the, uh, it's a five by five grid, so it's 25 spaces. I believe you put I and J in the same space. Um, you write the alphabet out there. Uh, now, you can do it just that way, but again, you know, that's, that's not hard to figure out and recreate and try to do it. So, you can also use a keyword to start out and then you know it's the remaining letters of the alphabet that get put in the final spaces so now it's it's you know kind of scrambled uh doesn't have to be too badly scrambled because the uh playfair cipher takes two letters at a time and depending on where they are in the grid, there are rules as to which two letters you use to represent, to substitute for those two letters. And uh, again, that means you are not using the same letter, the same symbol to represent the same letter every time. So again, you know, you're defeating the frequency analysis. Um, now, again, um, there are, uh, you know, if you know more about the language, there are, there's digraph analysis. Uh, and again, this is uh, particularly for the, the Playfair cipher, because um, which two letters are the most common. But in order to do that analysis, we've got to have more text that uses the Playfair cipher and has been enciphered using the same key. Uh, but we can do that kind of frequency analysis and uh, get more information about it and eventually uh, possibly break it. There's, there's also trigraph analysis, so on and so forth. Uh, once again, um, like I say, it's grid-based. Um, and Lord Playfair, again, somebody who knew something about ciphers, uh, did not think it would, did not invent this and did not think it was a particularly good cipher. So some interesting stuff there. Um, so we've got algorithms, we've got keys, and we've got means of cryptanalysis in, in different ways and ways to avoid those particular uh, cryptanalytic attempts.